Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. About five years ago, there was an incident with a family member. Actually, it wasn't a single incident. It was a series of incidences, and they were bad. I did my best at the time to do what was right in the relationship, but every single thing I did just seemed to make it worse. And so eventually I decided the only thing I could do was to walk away from this relationship. I was in life coach training at the time, which meant two things for me. One, I had a ton of practice coaching on this issue and being coached on this issue because I was in training like from a huge variety of sources and styles, master coaches, newbie coaches, coaches that tried all kinds of different things. But nothing happened in those sessions that allowed me to let go of my anger. The second thing that happened is that I felt kind of extra terrible. I felt bad. Like, how could I be a good life coach if I couldn't get over this? How would I ever help my clients get over hard things in their life? But really, what I found out is that the biggest piece of being a good coach is being willing to see your own mind, to see what you're thinking and how you feel about what you're thinking. And I got tons and tons of practice at that. And the truth was, I just wasn't ready to forgive. And it became a source of compassion and connection with my clients who had their own hard things in their life that they weren't ready to forgive. Ex-wives who were stealing from them, ex-husbands who sent their kids home from the weekends, like all hopped up after a weekend of sugar and no rules. Parents who were struggling with their relationship with their own parents and their own feelings about things that happened in their childhood. Unreasonable bosses, unreasonable coworkers. <laughs> Many of us have things in our lives that we are struggling to forgive. And the catchy quotes that come from even very good sources like the Buddha and Tolstoy and Martin Luther King. They don't really help us that much. They say things like, forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. And while that's true, it did not feel like a gift. It felt like I would be letting him off the hook and putting myself in harm's way. Or another quote that's quite famous is, forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Let no man pull you low enough to hate him. That's Martin Luther King. I was like, great, now I'm low because of what he did and I'll never have peace in my heart. Fabulous. (laughs) So inherent in those quotes was a reminder of how much hurt I was experiencing and how much hurt I was going to continue experiencing if I didn't forgive. So let me tell you what did help. The first thing is Don't pressure yourself to forgive too quickly. Like I said, I felt so much pressure from culture at large, other family members, from like the good advice that I read on coffee mugs (laughs) is I felt a lot of pressure that it was on me to forgive and reminders that if I didn't forgive quickly, that I would just be prolonging the hurt. Okay, so I want to debunk that right away. If forgiveness is the gift you give yourself, then you have a choice when you're going to take that gift. And it took me years to forgive this person. I want to be clear, I didn't stay mad the whole time. I just stayed present to where I was at in the process and accepted my very real feelings about the situation. It isn't that I thought about it all the time, but it did come up occasionally. Like it was definitely, there were other reminders in my life that this relationship was not right. And so when it came up, I just stayed aware, like I sort of checked in to see where I was at and if it was ready to change. Because that's the bottom line. To forgive is to change something about yourself, to be willing to change something. And I I wasn't ready, even though I cognitively understood that my anger was hurting me. 
another part of my brain felt like that anger was protecting me from getting hurt again. And even though I knew that wasn't true, I still, part of me believed it. And so I just noticed again and again and again and decided that I could hold both beliefs in my brain and let that be enough. The belief that I didn't need my anger and that someday I would feel safe letting it go and the belief that right now I needed to hang on to my anger like to feel safe. And that's kind of meta because it's the brain watching itself, but that's really important piece of what we're doing on this podcast and of life coaching in general, okay? Like I never tell clients what to think or push them to do things until they're ready because our brain, like the key is understanding what we're thinking and how we're feeling in different situations and then choosing what to do next, And if we've been wronged, we so often feel powerless. And it's important not to further wrong yourself by requiring forgiveness before you're ready, right? Like if you're already feeling powerless about the situation, about something that happened, to then push yourself to forgive when you're not ready just will increase that feeling of powerlessness. So number one is don't push yourself to forgive before you're ready. Number two is to know the difference between wanting to forgive and thinking that you should want to forgive and being okay with not being ready. Okay, it doesn't make you a bad person. You don't have to justify to others why you haven't forgiven this person, especially if you feel you should have stood up for yourself more in the situation. It can be very healing to stand up for yourself now by not letting others determine your timeline. And going back to my situation, as long as I believed that I needed this anger to protect me from getting hurt, then to force myself to give up that anger would have felt like I was saying I wasn't worth protecting or that I couldn't count on myself to protect myself, which would have made the anger like (laughs) it would have made me need the anger even more. Okay, it would have made the whole thing take even longer. The third thing I learned is that forgiving others comes from the same well is being able to forgive ourselves, okay? That comes from the same source. So if you want to forgive someone, but you can't, growing your general ability to forgive will help. And you can do that by forgiving yourself, okay? And this one can be a little sneaky because what you are blaming yourself for in this situation can be hidden or tied up with a victim mentality, right? If you push yourself to do this too soon, or I think this is a great place to have a life coach be helping you, you don't want to make yourself wrong for what happened, but you want to more accurately see the situation and see how your actions played into that. Because in most situations, you did play some part that you wished you hadn't played. Even if that part was as small as ignoring an early warning signal that something was wrong or not advocating for yourself in the way that you wish you would have. Okay, truly forgiving yourself will feel good. It's worth going through and figuring out which parts you had a hand in because when you're able to truly forgive yourself, it feels like setting down a really heavy weight. Like if you walked into the house with like a whole bunch of heavy groceries and someone helped you by taking those out of your arms and helping you set those down. And for me, the thought that helped me forgive myself was truly believing that I did the best I could at the time and that I did what I did for reasons that I could feel really good about. Those were the two thoughts that I used quite a bit. The next thing that helped me was being open to the intermediary steps of forgiveness Okay, to look for ways to feel good about the person, even if you're not ready to forgive what happened in that situation, or really to look for ways to feel good either about the person or about the situation itself. And for me, that included an appreciation for the good things that came out of that situation that wouldn't have happened if it had gone down differently. Okay, there were parts of that situation that worked out that would not have worked out in the same way if it had gone (laughs) more like I wanted it to. It doesn't mean that the way I wanted it to go down wasn't right. It just having an appreciation that there were did end up being some good parts 
that was helpful to me. Second thing is I developed an appreciation for the good parts about this person. That even if we were having a difficult relationship, it didn't mean that this person was terrible. It just meant that for whatever reason, like we really had this struggle. This person did have good parts and really leaning in and appreciating those gave me like a little bit of wiggle room around my anger. And then eventually I got to a place where I loved this person and those feelings of love sat right alongside my anger about what happened. If you had asked me like the day, the month, maybe even the year later, I would not have thought that that was possible. But even then, I hadn't totally forgiven them. Until one day, I was running on some back roads. We live in Michigan. It was a beautiful day, and I was out running in the country. And the Avett Brothers song, No Hard Feelings, came up on my playlist, which is not a regular running song at all. And I'll put a link in the show notes for the song. <laughs> You'll be like, how could you run to that song? So I don't know. I don't know why the song came up on my playlist, but all of a sudden I had such a flood of emotions and it was gone. I'd forgiven them. I felt it come over me in a wave and it was just totally gone. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice now. We had never talked about this situation, and I doubt that we ever will, because I know for sure I don't need to. Like, it's that gone for me. Those beliefs that I've been practicing all these years about how we were all just doing the best we could had finally taken root, and I forgave him. Like I said, that physical sensation for me is like someone had taken a really heavy box out of my arms and helped me set it down. Like this heavy thing that I'd been carrying around that I finally could let go of. And again, I know this is meta, but the person that had helped me set it down was me. I was the one who had gently practiced forgiveness and compassion for myself all of those years. And the me that had spent the countless hours like getting coached on the situation, trying to see it from new angles and being open to believing that I could be safe without my anger, that's the person that helped me set it down. And that's what I want for you, my friend. Don't forgive until you're ready. If someone had wrestled that heavy box out of my arms before I was ready, we would have both ended up just hurting ourselves. Okay, if I had forced myself to forgive before I was ready, I would have been telling myself that I wasn't worth protecting. It was only until I felt strong enough to protect myself without that anger that I was ready to let that go. So if you have a situation that you truly want to get past, then know that forgiveness is possible for you. And it feels amazing. It really is worth doing the work for. And I'm here to help you. After totally free, no pressure sessions where we dive into what happened, what you want to have happen, and how to bridge the difference. You'll walk away from these sessions with a new way of looking at your situation and a clear idea of what to do next. You can grab one of these sessions by texting TALK TO Allie to the number 44222 which will prompt you for your email and then I'll send you a scheduling link. Or you can always go to AllieIrwin.com and grab a session there. Have a great week, everyone. Mm-hmm.